You know, even though it's just a rookie tournament, I was really hoping that I was going to get to wear the victory chain at least once during the Young Stars, but that's okay. We will save that for when the Oilers do win their next game, whenever that is, whether that's preseason or regular season. Uh, the Oilers lose 2-0 to the Winnipeg Jets Young Stars, and this was a tournament to forget for many of the Oilers Young Stars. I, we, we know the roster wasn't very strong on paper. A ton of camp invites. Most of their defensive group were camp invites on drafted and it really really showed uh the oilers just didn't have a lot of gas no steam and um they had more fights in this tournament than they had goals scored and i think that's a poor reflection on the actual coaching staff and the coaching system with these young stars the oilers had good enough players that can produce offense like matthew savoy matt Vay petrov um James Steffen, like there are players on this team that can score goals and they really struggled. They could not get anything going throughout the whole Young Stars tournament. I'll be curious to see who ends up getting invited to main camp and who gets cut. Um, some good players, you know, some some good showings from players that you would expect to have good showings, some poor showings from players that I expected better from. Uh, but let's talk about it. Let's talk about the uh, Young Stars game against the Winnipeg Jets, our post-game recap, if you will. I will recap each period, first, second, and third. So if you end up enjoying the recap, make sure you hit like. If you really like it, make sure you hit subscribe. Daily Oilers content. I will be doing this all season, by the way, for every game. Uh, I did not do a pregame report before this game like I said I would because I felt like I didn't have anything else to talk about in terms of the young stars and the rookies. Um, I've made videos about everyone, and I didn't have a lineup card, so I figured I'd just do the post game and uh, we'll go from there. So First period, Brett Brochu was in net for Edmonton. Thomas Millich was in net for Winnipeg. Early rough stuff between Corbet and Shibrikov. Now, Corbet, he ended up fighting later in the period, but we will talk about that. Good save for Brochu early. Winnipeg had early pressure, and then Lajoie made a good defensive play. Brochu with another good save in tight. Edmonton's top line was hemmed in twice early in the game. That's the Matthew Savoy line. Then there was a massive hit on Berglund at center ice, and he did not return. Berglund was shaken up, and he did not return to the game. Wakely then had a chance on a two-on-one, and then Warner, I thought he was uh, sluggish a little bit early in the game, and he didn't really get his legs going throughout most of the game, I thought, uh, but again, Warner, that's his third game in four nights. Four, third game in less than four nights, really, because this was an afternoon game, so a lot of fatigue might have been setting in here. Uh, he then had a shot on a two-on-one for Winnipeg. Shots were 6-3 early for the Jets. Berglund, this is when he left the bench at this point of the period. Clattenburg had a couple of chances for Edmonton. Corbet then had his third fight, and it negated a really, really good scoring chance for the Edmonton Oilers. Now, I understand the logic of Corbet. He's, a, he's an invite to this Young Stars tournament, and he's trying to make a name for himself there are nhl scouts in the stands you're trying to get noticed any way you can but there is a time and a place for these fights the oilers had a terrific it was basically a three-on-one they had a chance in the high slot corbet drops the gloves right before the offensive zone nullifies the play and for corbet i just didn't like the timing of it um and i i just in general don't like the idea of players literally getting punched in the head just to try and get an opportunity to have a 0.01 percent chance of making an NHL roster especially at his age. Again, I admire the heart of Corbet. I really do. Uh, but in that situation, Edmonton, they were really struggling just to produce any offense throughout the whole tournament. They finally get a really good look, and then Corbet nullifies it. So I didn't like that play. A lot of people will think it was good that he fought there, but I don't know, man. Time and place, Corbet, in my opinion. Wander then hits the crossbar off of a really good shot not too long after, and then another two-on-one for the Jets. Shot goes wide. Wander then with a bad giveaway, but Edmonton recovered. Wakely gets a good backhander that is saved by Millich in tight. DeYoung, Nickel, and Groob then had a really good shift in uh, the jet zone. They had a lot of zone pressure. Then there was a hooking penalty to O'Reilly with 319 to play. LeJoy with a good play to clear the puck on the penalty kill. Groob then had a good shorthanded chance. Good kill for the Oilers. They were one for one at this point. Brochu was forced to make a terrific save late. Savoy then goes the other way as the period comes to a close. At the end of one, the score was 0-0. Shots were 9-9. Penalty kill for Edmonton, one for one. Took a bit, but Edmonton eventually did find their skating legs. But as the game went on, I really felt like Winnipeg took over here. Set, start of the second period, Jets with an early chance. It was stopped by Brochu. O'Reilly clears it. Um... 
Winnipeg, they started buzzing. They were all over the offensive zone. Roy with a good shot for Edmonton not long after. Now it's a shooting gallery for the Jets. Oilers were just trying to hang on. The Jets were just throwing pucks from all over the place. And then Stefan sets up Wakely, who's looked good for Edmonton at this point in the game. I liked Dallin Wakely a lot in this tournament. I will talk about him a little bit later. Stefan, uh... Oh, I already got that. Bad giveaway by Davidson on the Oilers. Brochu has to make a very good save. Wakely then had another good rush shot. Then there was a hooking penalty to Groob. Jets power play. O'Reilly does not clear the zone early on the power play, and Winnipeg makes them pay. one nothing Jets off a one-timer from Torgerson, who I thought had a really good game for the Jets. Power play goal. Brochu then has to make another good save off another Oilers turnover, and that's kind of been the story of this entire tournament. Turnovers after turnovers. Defensive giveaways. Weak all along the boards, unable to get the puck out, unable to get the puck deep. Uh, Edmonton's goaltenders were under fire the entire tournament here. Millich then somehow keeps the puck out on the goal line. Uh, Savoy had a really good chance. Clattenburg hit hard into the boards, and then he drops the gloves with Anhorn. Uh, he laid the dangerous hit for Winnipeg. It ended up being four on four, which I thought was really strange. I thought Anhorn was going to get two minutes for boarding and then five minutes for fighting with Clattenburg, who also dropped his gloves, but they gave them each two minutes for roughing, so I thought that was interesting officiating. Warner then had a bad neutral zone giveaway, and Brochu has to be sharp once again. Again, Warner, I like like Wanner a lot. He played really good for Bakersfield last year. I did not like his game today for the Edmonton Oilers. Petrov then sets up Groob, who can't bury it. Oilers take a late penalty with about a minute remaining. And then there was an unbelievable save by Brochu, and then another unbelievable save by Brochu. King then hits the post for Winnipeg as the period comes to a close. End of two, one nothing Jets. Shots for 25-18 Winnipeg. Penalty kill for Edmonton, one for two at this point. And the shots were 25-18, but I guarantee the shot attempts were probably about 55 to 30. Like, the Jets were just all over the Oilers. Uh, not many standouts for Edmonton. The skill and experience gap was showing very, very much in this game. Wakely, Savoy, and Brochu, I thought were good for Edmonton up to this point. Third period now, a minute and two seconds of penalty kill to start the third, and then Winnipeg gets a four-on-one. Brochu makes a save off of a uh, bit of a flubbed shot by the Winnipeg Jets. Oilers make the kill. They were two for three. Brochu uh, then loses his mask, tried to get the attention of the ref who blew the play after the Oilers iced it. Uh, he had his mask without, you know, he had his mask for a while not on his face and the Oilers had possession but they did not blow the whistle down, which is very curious. It's a Young Stars tournament. Just blow the whistle. Keep these players safe, man. Uh, Jets were applying pressure. Oilers struggling with puck possession. Bomb with a good shot off the rush for Edmonton. Stefan then had a good shot block in the defensive zone. Oilers then get their own power play after some rough stuff in front of the Jets bench, but they don't really get set up. Not many good looks. Edmonton finished 0 for 1 on the power play. Lejoy finds Bomb, who's stopped by Divisentis. I don't know how to pronounce that goaltender's name. I'm very sorry, Jets fans. He uh, started for Winnipeg in the third period. Combined shutout, by the way, for him and Millich, so that was pretty cool. Now Brochu has to be Sharp once again for the Oilers, making uh, a couple of consecutive saves. O'Reilly then tries to find Clattenburg, who could not get a good shot off. Nikonen then makes it 2 0 for Winnipeg off of another turnover by the Oilers at the blue line. The Oilers were just really careless with the puck. They weren't strong along the boards. They weren't able to make any kind of per, you know good passing plays, good breakout plays. And I think a lot of this is coming down to coaching, in my opinion. Uh, really stifled the Oilers' offense. Just again, that's me. I'm not like incredibly familiar with Colin Chalk. Uh, Chalk, I didn't like how his system was in Bakersfield. They extended him. He's He put together the Young Stars, coached the Young Stars. I don't like his system at all. Oilers unable to get set up in the offensive zone. Um, Groob then drops the gloves with Jilkin, who didn't drop his gloves. So Groob was the only one who took a penalty there. Uh, 2.37 remaining. Winnipeg gets away with a delay of game penalty. Uh, empty net for Edmonton. No Savoy with the empty net, which I thought was very curious. They had the empty net for about a minute and a half, and I did not see Savoy on the ice. However, if he was on the ice, please let me know in the comments. I might have just missed it, but I did make a note of it in my notes here because Savoy is uh, arguably Edmonton's most offensively gifted player in this tournament and not having him out there for a lot of the late third period push to try and get a goal and get back in the game very interesting coaching decision and not one that I agree with and like I mentioned when your team has more fights than goals scored in a tournament there's a problem and the problem comes down to the coaching staff yes player personnel was a problem here for Edmonton in this tournament but again a lot of this is coaching as well um, good coaches can elevate a mediocre roster and Colin Colin Chalk uh 
can't he couldn't elevate this roster because I don't think he's that great of a coach. Final score, two nothing Winnipeg. Shots were 34 27 in favor of the Jets. Now we'll quickly just do a little recap of the tournament for Edmonton and discuss the preseason coming up for the main NHL roster. So two nothing Jets win. The Oilers main training camp opens this Wednesday, September 18th. So that's in two days from now. Uh physicals are on Wednesday and then Thursday they get into the actual training camp on the ice. Uh and then next up in terms of games for Edmonton. Their NHL preseason starts against Winnipeg, just like here in the Young Stars Tournament, September 22nd, which is a Sunday at 4 p.m. Mountain. I will have a pregame report up for that, and I will also have a postgame recap. The postgame might be a little bit later. I do work until 6.30 p.m., so it's going to take a little bit of time for me to catch up watching that game, but I will have the content for you, I promise. In this Young Stars Tournament, the Oilers in three games played, they go over three, shots four percentage, 44%, goal Goals for percentage, 12.5%. Power play 0 for 6. Penalty kill 7. 7 for 9. Notable players who I thought were positive for Edmonton. Uh, honorable mention to Dallin Wakeley, who I thought really had his best game of the tournament today. I did like his game in game two against Calgary, but I thought Dallin Wakeley was Edmonton's best forward today. Now, Matt Savoy, Sam O'Reilly, I thought they had good tournaments as well. Sam O'Reilly, not maybe as great of a tournament today as he had in the past. Uh, and then Connor Unger, Nathaniel Day, and of course, Brochu now for Edmonton. Every goaltender for the Oilers played very, very well. And underwhelming players. I have Matt Vey Petrov, Max Wanner, James Steffen, and Mark LaJoy. They had an opportunity to get out of the underwhelming section for me today. Uh, neither of them were able to do so. Petrov, absolute ghost during this entire tournament. Max Wanner, he had good moments. He had bad moments. Uh, I thought he was very average in this tournament. And for someone uh, who's clearly better than any of the other defensemen who was invited for Edmonton, I was expecting just a little bit more from Wander. Maybe I'm too hard on him. Maybe there was too much pressure. I'm not sure. Maybe a little bit of rust, but I think Max Wander, he's going to be much better in main training camp for Edmonton once that gets going. And then James Steffen, I thought he didn't have a great Young Stars tournament either. Uh, after coming off a 50-goal season for the Portland Winterhawks, I was really hopeful that there was going to be a little bit more from James Steffen. And Mark LaJoy on D for Edmonton, again, uh, expecting a little bit more offense, a little bit more... Um, uh, I don't know what the word would be, but he didn't show the way I thought he would. Uh, I thought with his size, with his speed, and with his skill, he'd be able to you know, overpower some of his opponents and get some good looks, but he wasn't really able to break through, really perimeter. Uh, he made some good defensive plays, but overall, the Oilers, not a great Young Stars tournament this year. But that's maybe a good thing, too, because that means the Oilers, they are in win-now mode. So, you know, not a lot of high-end prospects. Usually when you have a lot of high-end prospects, you're drafting very high in the draft, meaning your NHL team is very bad. The Oilers are in a cup window right now, so we'll see how they play during the preseason. We'll get a better look at different players. I would like to see players like Max Wanner uh, paired with defensemen that are a little bit better than Mark Lejoy uh, or Lejoie. And hopefully go from there. There's a lot of question marks heading into training camp. We'll have more videos coming up this week. I'll be covering training camp a lot as well. So if you're excited to see that, make sure you subscribe to the channel, have notifications turned on. And if there are Oilers fans that you think would enjoy my content, make sure to let them know, tell a friend, share the video all over social media. Uh, we're always looking for more fans to join the team and uh, hang out on the YouTube channel. I enjoy engaging with everyone. Let me know all of your thoughts on this tournament in the comments section below. And uh, we'll see you soon, Oil country. Please tell someone that you love them. Very important to me. And as always, fight like a kid and fight like Ben. I wear this wristband every day from the Ben Stelter Foundation. Uh, excited for training camp to get going. We have almost actual NHL hockey here, and I'm very excited. So thanks for watching. We'll see you next time, Oil Country.